The Hyundai Ioniq 5 is an absolutely incredible vehicle. It's available either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. On top of that, it's got a few different ranges, whether you're in Canada versus the States, and it's kind of neat all around. From what's going on with the gorgeous tires, we've got some unique blue highlights. Those are done aftermarket, not available from the factory, but it makes it pop that tiny little bit more. Now, I love what Hyundai's done with the Ionic, from the amount of power that this thing can push out, some of the standard and available technology in it is unbelievable. Steve here, and before we dive into this vehicle and figure out what it's all about, I want to give Ajax Hyundai a huge shout out and a thank you for giving me access to this vehicle to shoot the video for you today. As always, check down below for their contact details. And I do, I want to say thank you so, so much for helping to support the channel. It's crazy to see how this thing has grown over the course of the past two years, and I'm kind of excited to see where I can be in the next two years. Let's unpack the Hyundai Ionic and see what this brand new electric vehicle has to offer. The exterior of the Ionic is pretty nice. I did point out the blue highlights. So along the bumper, along the sides, and then even some things on the inside have been done aftermarket. So it's not a standard look from the factory, but it gives it a little bit of a pop. It makes it look that tiny little bit different from what you're gonna see in the majority of the Ionic 5s that are on the streets right now. But this thing does look sharp, even by itself, the way that it looks without these aftermarket kind of exterior upgrades. We do have a nice wheel well lining there. And the tire size for this thing is gonna be either a 19 or a 20 inch, depending on the model of the vehicle that you're in. Now, this specific one is the preferred extended range all wheel drive, which in the US is going to be the limited equivalent, but there are a few things in the limited that are standard that are optional inside of our preferred. So as a default in Canada and our preferred, we're gonna have a 19 inch tire optional upgrade to 20 inch tires in one of the added tech packages not only gives you that upgraded tire, it's gonna give you a heads up display and a lot of other features inside the vehicle. But it's also gonna bump up your price point. So if you in Canada wanna make sure that you hit that federal rebate, just make sure you get it built without that added on, that add on package. So if you want that heads up display, you just may not be eligible for the federal rebate, unfortunately. But overall look and styling inside this thing is great. I do notice that a lot of EVs specifically go for this style rim versus the traditional split spoke wheels and things like that we'll find in some other vehicles, but it still looks fairly nice. You could always customize these things with stickers and hydro dipping and all sorts of other things if you want to give it a little bit more of a unique look for your personality. Now we do have our LED headlamps, or daytime nighttime running lamps. We've got our fogs down there as well. I think we've got our Hyundai badge right along the very front. We've got a nice like aluminum look right along the very front, bottom part of the bumper there. And we've got these shutters that'll open and close as necessary, which is kind of neat. But I want to take you, I want you to take a peek underneath the hood of the vehicle to see what's going on with what they've done. I think it's kind of unique. Now, very similar to what you're going to find in the majority of gas powered vehicles. Getting underneath the hood, there's a simple latch to the left hand side. And actually getting underneath this thing, just underneath the Hyundai badge, just drop your hand in there. You're just going to crank all the way to the left on hydraulics, which is definitely a nice thing. And I kind of love what Hyundai's done with this thing. It, they've really kind of taken the look of a re regular gas powered vehicle and they've put it underneath the hood of this. Like we've got an engine cover down here that serves no functional purpose, but it just looks like it's a more traditional style gas vehicle instead but it looks fairly nice. We've got those blue highlights that we saw on the outside of the vehicle that are carried through this little cover. And lifting this bad boy up, we've got a nice amount of storage space underneath here. So really, really useful. We need to store a few things. It's not a ton of space, but at the same time, if you need to throw a few extra things in there, you've got that flexibility. Then one of the best parts about owning an EV is how much stuff you're gonna have to worry about maintaining. This is it. <laughs> well, with the exception of the brakes and the tires as well. But underneath the hood, this is all you're going to need to worry about. We've got a few fluids, specifically our washer fluid along the left hand side there. And then we've got easy access to lights and things like that. So if you're handy, you want to change out a bulb yourself, you'd have the flexibility to do it. A little bit tighter on the passenger side in comparison to the driver, but not impossible all at the same time. But one of the cool things is what's going on with this hold button there. So all we do is press and hold, but watch what happens when we do. So we've got our charge door that opens up. We can press and hold again in order to close the charge door, which is amazing. I love that we can do that directly from the key fob. 
Now that's great, but we do also have the flexibility on the outside to be able to open up the charge door as well. Now one thing, the vehicle's locked right now, so we can't open it up until we unlock. So we unlock and we can press and up it goes. So we've got a few different ways that we can charge this thing up, which is nice. Charge times are gonna vary with obviously we use supercharging is gonna be able to charge us up the fastest, but you've got your options if you need to, if you only have access to a level one charger, it will charge it. It's just going to take a very long time to do it in comparison to our standard level twos. But charge numbers are gonna kind of be all over the place there. We do have a charge indicator, so how full are we? We've got a few other options down there as well. So if we need to get to our faster charger, and then we can also, like I mentioned, use the key fob if we wanna open and close, but we've got another handy little button there. You know, to close this thing down. Now the back end of the vehicle is fairly nice. We've got our Ionic badge that's just right below our Hyundai badge along the top there. We've got nice tail lamps there. Kind of, it's interesting. It's kind of neat the way that Hyundai's done this. It looks fairly sharp and super unique. Again, we get into those blue highlights that were done after market, which make this thing pop that tiny little bit more. We do have our backup camera and that's a North American standard. You're always gonna have the backup camera inside this vehicle. So that's always there. And we do have our park sensing system. So those reverse sensors, that beeping that we get as we back up, that is available. We do also have the option for factory towing. It's not like you're able to pull a ton with this thing, but if you're gonna be pulling a small trailer, a bike, or you have a bike rack carrier, whatever the case may be, this thing will actually be able to support it. Now, one thing you may not be able to see from your vantage point, but because of the spoiler, the way that it's raised up along the very top there, we can kind of see through from this vantage point, which is kind of neat but we don't have any sort of rear windshield wiper on this thing whatsoever. But at the same time, it still looks fairly nice. Getting into the trunk of the vehicle is also straightforward. So right above our license plate, so just to the right-hand side of that backup camera, there's a button there. So we're just gonna pull that in order to release. But let's have a peek at the cargo dimensions. The cargo dimensions for the Ionic are gonna be showing up and we've got a few different measurements that are available there. But the cargo area is fairly nice because this essentially is a hatchback. So we do have quite a little bit of space in that back row, which is definitely a nice thing. And you can make it out just behind the second row seats, but we do have our anchors and tethers, which means that front facing, rear facing child seats, you're not gonna have an issue whatsoever. No. Folding down the third row, the second, the third row, folding down the second row is a little bit easy to do, but we can't actually do it from the trunk area. We have to be inside the vehicle. So we're just gonna hop inside. We have our little release and down it goes. So it's a 60-40 split, so 60 driver, 40 passenger. And one of the neat things is that when the seats are down, it actually stays locked down. So you have to physically lift it back up yourself using the handle. So if we crank this, it's not gonna move. We have to take that lever in order to lift this thing back up. But I mean, it's super straightforward to do it all at the same time. But if we need to, we can fold down one side or the other. Like I said, 60-40 split. So we've got that flexibility if we need it. Right now, along the left-hand side of the cargo area, we do have a little power point. So a 12-volt power point, it's 180 watt, that's in the back there. So we can power up quite a few things. We do have four tie-downs as well. So one in the back here, one a little bit further up along that wheel well. And that's going to be the same for the driver and for the passenger side. Now, on top of that, we've also got this tray. That's fully removable, which I always love it when they're fully removable like that. And Hyundai, they always, all other trays, always removable, super straightforward. But underneath, we've got everything that we need essentially for the electric side of things. We've got our tire, <laughs> tire mobility kit that appears to be, oh yeah, that is, that's in there. Woo, that's Velcro down and that is Velcro down like crazy. But we've got our tire mobility kit. We've also got our charger, which it's a 20 foot cable that's gonna be included from the factory. And we've got a few other things. So we've got a few other pieces for our cargo nets and a few other things back there on top of that, but fairly straightforward, but there isn't too much stuff back here. Otherwise it's nice and simple. They've stripped down the weight that you're gonna have just because of the nature of electric. You don't wanna have too much weight inside of this thing. Along the right side of the cargo area, not too much back here. We don't have any sort of power points along the right side by default, but we do have some wiring provisions. So so it does look like we'd have the flexibility of being able to install something ourselves back here if we absolutely need it. All right, taking a peek along our driver's side door. So we do have this handle here, which is so neat. Like, as you can see there, so I press it, it locks the door. I can press in order to unlock, and then it brings this handle out. 
and sliding. And that's the same for the first, second row driver passenger side. So that's great. But take a peek at this interior. Ah, so, so nice. We'll get to the interior in just a second. But along the driver's side door there, we've got our base handle. We do also have this little position, like this part right behind the door. So in order to be able to shut the door, we can grip onto any part of the door itself, which is fantastic. We've got this nice blue aftermarket highlight, which brings a little bit more uniqueness to the vehicle. We can control what's going on with our side view mirrors, left versus right side. We can also unlock lock, basic window up and down. And we've got a little storage space along the driver's side and as well as the passenger side door. Along the bottom scuff plate, you can also make that out. We do have our Ionic badge down there. And then moving up. So we can bring the seat forwards, backwards, up and down. We can also adjust the backrest there. And then we've got our two-way lumbar support. Moving on the inside, just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, a few other options that are available there. So we can increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen, traction control on or off. We can turn on our auto hold setting. So this one's gonna hold the vehicle in place when we come to a complete stop and take our foot off the brake. We've also got our parking brake. And then we also do have our manual telescoping steering wheel. So we just drop down and then adjust as necessary. And moving down to the side, so typical styling with most manufacturers, just to the left-hand side of the pedals. We also do have a release for the hood. So what we're gonna do is just give that a pull in order to get underneath. I love the way that the door shut. Like it's not a soft close like we'll find in some high-end luxury vehicles, but just closing the door, there's that entire part of the door itself that we can pull in order to close the doors. And that's for the first and the second row. It's pretty neat what Hyundai's decided to do with it, but overall first impressions of this vehicle, I think they did a really, really good job on the design of it. We've got this great looking cluster screen, multimedia screen that supports Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and a number of great things, but I love it. I love it. We've got a speaker along the side. We've got them all over the place. This thing looks really sharp. Hyundai, good job. So a few things. We've got so many different sticks and so many different options and things like that. So I'm just going to cover off some of the basics, but if you're looking for a fuller walk around, like you want to know how all of these different sticks and buttons and things like that work, or if you're looking through a walkthrough on the media screen to figure out how to connect Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, things like that, check down below for those fully comprehensive walkthrough videos instead. But the highlights, the basics. Stick on the left-hand side is going to let us control what's going on with all of our lights so we can adjust our high beams out as necessary there. Stick on the right-hand side is going to let us control our front windshield wipers. Well, our front, we don't have rear ones whatsoever, so our windshield wipers. There is another stick a little bit further down, and that's going to be our gear selector. So we can go all the way up in order to get into drive. We drop down once for neutral, full drop down, safety setting almost for reverse. And then we've got our parking gear right on the very tip of that stick. But all of these things have a great feel, like it's a nice metallic finish. They've done a really good job here. We do have some paddle shifters inside of this thing, but it's unique the way that the paddle shifters work. And that's gonna essentially be different recharts or regen braking modes. So all the way on the right-hand side, more or less it's like regen braking isn't working whatsoever. And then we've got three other levels. So we've got level zero, one, two, three, and then we can press that one more time in order to get into our one pedal driving. And what's going to happen is you will notice a huge difference when you're in each mode. Like when you're in the zero mode, you can take your foot off the gas and the car will pretty much stay coasting. Versus if we're on the level three and take your foot off the gas, the car is almost going to feel like it's braking for you. Even more pronounced when we get into that eye pedal or the one pedal driving instead. That's pretty much, you take your foot off the accelerator and the car is pretty much gonna to come to a complete stop fairly rapidly. So it's a great system. It does take a little bit to get used to though, and it's such a great system all around. We've got a driving, uh, our mode selector, which means that we can change between either our normal mode, we can go between our eco and then the sport mode. The sport mode inside of this thing though is really, really nice. I, I love it. I don't stop talking about the sport mode. If you want a test drive of what this thing's like in full 360 VR, check down below because I've put together a comprehensive video there. It's kind of neat all at the same time, but so many good features available. And like I said, with the media screen, hold on, I got to do this first. Amazing song, amazing sound. This is absolutely amazing. Like the sound inside of this thing is really, really nice. You could always do aftermarket upgrades if you really wanted to, but I think for most people, like probably 98% of people, the audio in this thing will be good enough as is. 
but this media screen is fantastic. Like I love what Hyundai's done with this thing. We've got great looks. We've got our EV settings. We've got basic maps. So we do have factory navigation inside of this, which is great. And it's full, like it's super responsive. Like it's got a nice feature, pinch to zoom works incredibly well. But if you're not a big fan of using factory navigation, we can still use Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze directly through this middle screen. Now, having said that, those systems are set up using a wired connection. So not wireless yet. I'm like, oh, hopefully upgrade this screen. It needs it, absolutely needs it. But even if yours doesn't have it, not a big deal. Now, one thing to point out, this does have the option for a heads up display, which this specific one doesn't. In the States, in your limited, you will have the heads up display standard. In Canada, you need an add-on package in order to be able to get the heads-up display, but it is so nice to have that as an option. Not necessary though, because at the same time, it still is really nice as is. And as we start to move down a little bit, so let's brighten you up a little bit, make it a teeny bit easier to see, but a series of other options. So we can push that in order to turn the radio on or off. We can adjust our volume there. Hot button press in order to get to our map, to our navigation menu, to our media. And then we've got a unique button that we can set up there. So this specific case, I do have it set up for our EV instead, but we can adjust as necessary. We've got our little P button there, so we can pull up our reverse camera. And then we've got our parking sensor. So our reverse parking sensors, if you don't wanna use it, you can turn that off. We are push button stored inside the vehicle. We can change what's going on with our temperature. So we are dual zone climate control inside of this. We can push down here in order to turn it off. So if you've got it going, it's going high. Ah, so crazy. We're gonna adjust and turn it off there. We've got our climate settings versus our warmer settings there as well. We can have a good or windshield, face, feet, any sort of combination in between. And it's pretty straightforward. But I do love the nice little look and layout there. It's kind of got this interesting feel. I kind of love what they've done with the Ionic here. So pretty straightforward. And as we start to move down a little bit more, now I mentioned earlier, so these little blue highlights, that's because this is done aftermarket. So it's a very, very unique look, I think, compared to what you traditionally see inside of the vehicle. But we do have a USB port as well as a 12 volt power point there as well. And we've got a big storage tray down there on top of that. As we move down from there, you can make it out, but we do have two cup holders. So two cup holders again with that blue highlight that's done aftermarket. And then you can make it out there, we do have two USB ports. So a, two, uh, two standard USB ports as well. But we have this armrest, which is kind of neat because we've got a little storage tray inside of it with a fully removable piece if we need to clean it out. We can also lift this thing up, almost like we can create a little jump seat. You can't, but it's almost like you kind of could. If you had like a little fur baby, maybe that could be like a little pocket sized dog. You could kind of stick them there, but here nor there. But we do have, like I said, a few USB ports and a nice amount of storage on top of that. Now, as we start to move up overhead, the dash looks fairly nice. We've kind of got some plastics that are married throughout part of the dash all the way throughout. So it's kind of got nice congruency there. Up overhead a bit more, we do have our manual dimming rear view mirror, our tow mode, SOS mode, our base cabin control lights, which is kind of neat. So we've got a few different options. Ooh, oh, hold on, is that a touch? Of, oh, that's cool. Okay, so we can turn on all the lights over top, overhead there, or we can just button press. Okay, yeah, or we can just button press to turn on one side or the other. Oh, that is so neat. It looks so cool at the same time. Now from there, this specific one is just the standard roof. So there isn't any sort of option for a panoramic roof, like a sunroof, things like that, with the exception of when you get into that higher package in the preferred in Canada or the limited in the States. And you've got your dual pane, so full open glass instead. Looks really, really nice inside of this thing, but this specific one doesn't have it, so the lower trims won't have it, but it will be standard when you get into those higher trim levels. We do also have vanity mirror in there, which does also have, so our visor, vanity mirror, we've got our light that's up over top there. And it's got a little business card holder and this thing slides out to block everything. So I love it when cars do that, when they block every little bit of sun that may potentially be hitting your face. There is an assist handle in the driver passenger side for the first and the second row. So if you need it, which this thing kinda has a teeny little bit of power, like a little bit, you'll probably need it, but it is nice all at the same time. Like I said, like seat comfort wise is fantastic. This is nice. We can easily adjust the seats, but with the seat all the way down, like I'm six feet tall. So seat all the way down and back. This is ridiculous. I've got like six, almost seven inches of headspace there. That is ridiculous. So if you're taller than six feet, like six, five, six, seven, you'll probably be able to fit in this thing. No problem. The second row of the Ionic is surprisingly spacious. 
Like I'm six feet tall and very similar to that first row. I got a ton of space, like three inches of head space back here with the driver's seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. Great amount of knee space, good amount of foot space, which is amazing. But overall, this thing is very comfortable. The seats have a good amount of cushion to them. And realistically, you could probably fit three of me. It'd be tight for three full-size versions of me. But if you had like a mini me in the middle there, probably be able to fit no problem. Now we do have anchors and tether points and things like that in the front and back of the seats. So front-facing, rear-facing child seats aren't gonna be an issue in this thing whatsoever. But the styling inside of this thing is really nice. Like very similar to what we saw inside of the first row. We've got these beautiful highlights along the door and it's nice, it's simple, it's elegant. Like this is well put together. One thing I like, we do have the climate control settings for both the driver passenger and the second row along the door. So we can adjust the fan speed, we can adjust where the actual fan is blowing in that back row, which is amazing. Behind the armrest of that first row, we do have two power points, so just regular USB. And then we've got a little storage pocket back there as well. And speaking of storage pockets, behind the driver passenger first row, we do also have a few cargo nets there so we can store some things along the door. And even along the driver passenger door, we do have some storage space there. We do also have ah, some cup holders. So a few cup holders there, bottle holders along the door. But one thing that's kind of unique is like, as we pop these things open, closing the door, like the entire lip of the door for the driver, even for the first row, it's neat. Like it's kind of got this grip all throughout. So you can just grab any part of it in order to be able to shut the door. So it is neat the way that Hyundai's decided to design the interior of this thing. I love it. We do also have the option so we can increase, decrease the headrest there and just a single way adjust. But nice, we've got our typical, so handles along the top, a little hook just along the driver's side, nothing on the passenger. And we can also can control the cabin lights. Oh, nice LEDs from that back row as well. But like I said, overall styling inside of this thing, look is great. I think Hyundai's kind of hit a home run with this car at the price point they have. This thing looks fantastic. All right, here we go. All right, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go for a little bit of a drive. I'm gonna circle back and, oh, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. Okay, hold on. So what I'm, I'm playing with the paddle shifters right now, and it's all to do with regenerative braking. So the higher the level, it feels like the faster it's going to brake for you at the same time, which is kind of neat. Okay, I wanna just double check that to make sure that's the case, but, okay, so I'm gonna go into the lowest mode possible, which in theory, yeah, it provides like next to no resistance for regenerative braking versus if I'm on level three, I feel, oh yeah, I can already feel it. Like it feels like it wants to slow down. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. So level three is going to slow down. Like it's your, like your max regenerative braking. You can feel the difference that makes. Like it's kind of ridiculous. And then there also is the option for one pedal driving. So that means that we don't have to worry about using the brake whatsoever. Oh, it's so weird. Okay, we can still use the brake, but in theory, you don't need to worry about using the brake with a one pedal drive because it's going to slow us down very quickly. Wow. Wow, that's neat. Okay. So the one pedal drive is amazing. Whether you go one pedal or not. Oh, so I'm in sport mode right now. So like realistically going one pedal driving doesn't necessarily make sense, but at the same time, you've got the flexibility to use it if you want to. Oh, but this is nice. This is really, really nice. Oh, that's priced, I should say, at that perfect level. Because in Canada, you can get a federal rebate for EV vehicles of up to $5,000 right now if it's 55,000 or less. This vehicle rings up at under 55,000. So technically you would be eligible for the federal rebate. And then there's also an Ontario rebate if you're a business owner on top of that. So there are all sorts of great incentives for this thing. This is pretty nice though. Super comfortable drive. The, back, the, the seat itself is actually pretty nice. Like it's just a cloth seat, but at the same time, it's comfortable. Now, one of the cool things is this, this is also past its break-in period, which means <laughs> we can also have a little bit of fun with it. So. Oh, that's nice. Instant torque, instant torque. I love it. I love EVs for that reason alone. Just the sheer amount of power that these things can push out is amazing. Now I have turned the smart cruise control system on. So we've got the option of easily doing that. And 
it's straightforward. So we can set one kilometer, one mile per hour at a time. We can adjust as necessary. We've got a distance indicator. So how close or how far are we away from the vehicle in front of us? And then there also is a lane centering button. So that lane centering, what that's going to do is keep us perfectly balanced in our lane as we go. But we've got the option for one pedal driving, which you know what, I'm actually gonna try that on the highway here. So I'm gonna go into, there we go, you heard that click? Okay, let's do this. Instant torque! <laughs> so good, <laughs> so good. Uh, but the downside of that one pedal driving, so I'm currently going 100 right now. I take my foot off the gas and it like slowed down almost instantly. But one of the benefits with that one pedal drive is it's going to help out with regeneratively, uh, with regening, or I should say with recharging the battery as you drive. So it is a really, really nice system. It takes a little bit of getting used to that one pedal driving, but it will bring you down to a complete stop. But like start comparison, because without that mode on, I'm just in regular mode right now. So zero technically in the regen braking scale. And it's like dri driving a regular gas vehicle. Like I'm on the highway right now. So taking my foot off of the gas in a gas vehicle, you'd slow down very slowly. And that's exactly what's happening here. So foot's off the gas in like 96, 95, 94. It's slowing me down very slowly, but it still is like what you'd find in a traditional gas vehicle. This is really nice though. Well, that was a look at the 2022 Ionic 5 and this thing is fantastic. I love what Hyundai's done with it. Their jump into this EV world, I think is amazing. And at the price point that they've got it at with the feature sets, this is a top contender for a lot of people, especially as an entry level vehicle. Like you've got all sorts of options. You're looking at Tesla, the Mach-E Mustang and a few other things, but it's gonna be hard to compete with it at this price point. I think Hyundai, you've done an excellent job here. But what did you think? If you have any questions, you wanna bounce some ideas off of each other, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. I'm super responsive, more than willing to get back to you and answer any questions you might have. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, take care.